I per I pause this on the most perfect frame. I feel like Aaron is about to make my whole day. I hope he's gonna make my day because it's been a it's been a rough week. In our first director's take of the year, game director Aaron Keller looks ahead at the goals of 2024 and how the team plans to improve the core PvP game. <laughs> Aaron, I need this, okay? I need this. There's never been a time in my life I needed it more than this moment. So please deliver. Hello everyone and happy 2024. So today's director's take is going to be the first part in a series where we talk about um, our values and our goals for the coming year. Um, and specifically in today's piece, I want to talk about um, improving the core PVP experience of Overwatch. And even more specifically, I'd like to talk about improving the in-match experience of Overwatch. Okay. What actually happens um, inside of a game. Um, now, it might seem kind of obvious to say that Overwatch is a team-based, hero-based, competitive first-person shooter. And when your team is working together, when, when every player is utilizing a hero to the best of their ability, and that team is executing a strategy in order to win a match, that the game feels really magical. There's really nothing else yeah. like it. And, Old and we like to facilitate um, teamwork as much as we can. And so um, we'll talk about some of our thoughts um, around doing that in the director's take today. Now, um, players aren't always acting in the best accordance or with what's um, best in mind for their team. And um, when they're not, sometimes that can be um, pretty frustrating right um and so we're also True. looking at ways of reducing that frustration and maybe even giving players um ways to to operate um without necessarily always depending on their team we'll even go over um a pretty Ow. juicy gameplay change that's coming in in season nine um with the purpose of of doing some of that um now we're also running different experiments to find ways of improving the game um, we just launched Quick Play Hacked, um, which is a whole new set of changes coming to Quick Play just through this weekend, where we're doing exactly that. We're, we're running a different set of rules for the game in order to find um, some ways that we could potentially improve it. Now, in future... For those who don't know, I haven't actually read the Quick Play Hacked thing. I've last few days have been a fucking disaster. So I haven't personally looked through all of it, but it looks like it's like they're just trying to speed up the pace of the game, but... Director's takes and subsequent ones. We're also going to be looking at some of the out-of-match experience and how we can improve that for Overwatch. Things like our competitive system and game balance. Also, game um, balance. sorry, hero balance. Also yep. game modes and um, live events that we'll be running through the year. And I think I'd even like to get into a bit of some of our longer term thoughts on on different systems that we think um, could potentially help the game or, and maybe even like much bigger features that could be coming further in the future. Uh, okay, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you in game. We didn't really talk about anything though, right? You just talked about like things they're working on and then the link, to, I'm guessing the links to the blog post. Oh, it is, okay. All right, I guess, yeah, but it was probably it was probably just an introduction to getting into the blog. I I understand that. Like you didn't want to just basically wanted to just hop in and be like, oh hey, you know, like we're we're working on all these things. Uh, here's more some more details. So let's let's see how it goes. Hello everyone and happy 2024. We're at the start of the new year. I thought it would be a great idea to talk about our view of 2024. This director's take will be one of a series where we frame up the year according to a set of values we're using to develop the game. These values translate into goals and specific additions and changes to the game. There's a ton of different things coming up this year that I want to share, so think of this as the first of a series of topics to cover. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured from the video, but... One of the biggest values in the of, Overwatch, of the Overwatch team sorry, is to constantly improve the core PvP game. Yeah, this is basically they've they've been they've been talking about this for about eight months, ever since like right before PVE disaster getting canceled. Um, they basically like we're trying to become more of a PvP game, which I was which is honestly the right call. Uh, but let's see. 
This is a broad topic spanning both in-game and out-of-game systems. Today I'd like to look at where we're at with the actual in-match experience. The moment-to-moment -moment combat, or in, in the moment-to-moment -moment combat, okay? I'll talk about what we're th we think is working, what isn't working, and go into some of the plans for the future. Additional director's takes in this series will look at the systems surrounding the PvP experience, such as our competitive system, hero balance, and economy. I'll take I'll also take some time to talk about the future events in limited time game modes, as well as a larger systems that have the possibility of coming to the game. Okay, sure. Hmm. You guys okay? Um, okay. So let's get into the Overwatch gameplay. Starting with the obvious, Overwatch is a team-based, hero-based, multiplayer competitive shooter. Heroes, maps, and game modes are all designed to require teams to work together in order to successfully win a match. When a team works together, each player uses their hero to their fullest potential while relying on each other to execute a strategy. The game feels magical. I'm guessing, I'm guessing they meant like when a player do, does that. Oh, when a team works together. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, there's really no other FPS like it. That's true, that's true. Um, there's a lot of things, especially towards Overwatch 1, I think, more of it. Honestly, Overwatch 2, you know, I want to be that guy, but I feel like in a lot of ways, Overwatch 2 has kind of lost that magic. It feels more deathmatchy, but, like, it still has it, right? Like, there's still glimmers of hope, but I understand what they're going for. However, when this isn't happening and players are working on their own, which happens a lot now, uh, the game is far from magical and can become frustrating. The reliance on teammates can simultaneously be one of the best and worst attributes of the game. That, that's true. That's true. We want to improve this. We want to improve this by looking at the game through the lens of teamwork and making it easier for players to be part of the team while also lessening some of the pain when it is not happening. Okay? In fact, a lot of our goals for improving the core game stem from looking at Overwatch as a whole, improving the parts of the game that are working, and finding fixes for the parts that negatively affect the experience. Okay. Do we have any details? Oh. Uh, we've already implemented some of these features to align with this. The ping system and the newer spawn together both encourage team play. That's only in quick play. Um, and I understand like what they're going for, and I think it's not bad for quick play. Um, but for ranked... Okay. So I've had a few situations where I had like a sweaty quick play game, and then like they just happen to have like the god spawns of like an Arissa coming out of spawn, standing on the cart, waiting, 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 waiting. Everyone else is dead, waiting, 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 and then everybody respawns as they die. And so then the next group's already coming out of the spawn, but it's so, like you you haven't really got anything done. They all come out. Somebody dies like right away. They're spawning with the Arissa, and then. The other three people slowly die, right? Like they die, like, you know, like two, three of them like drop out over time. Um, and then the Arissa is on the way back. And it's just like, it's this endless cycle of like feeling like you're being stalled out, which is kind of, kind of bad, you know? Okay. For those who don't know, the spawn together system adjusts individuals, players respawn time. So they respawn with teammates more often. This system will get a tuning pass in the season, in season nine, to make the effect more prominent, but we're talking about other features that will make it easier for players to work together as a team. I'm a little bit worried about that just because like I've already felt in quick play where it can like genuinely make a game on like third point King's Row, for example, much more frustrating. Um, and I in comp, I, I would assume that would be exasperated a little bit, uh, but we'll see. Uh, party frames is one of these. Wait, what? Party frames is one of these. These are the on-screen player health indicators that we use for our PvE events. Oh, other possible features such as backfill improvements, changes to our scoreboard, and ways to mitigate spawn camping also align with this. Okay, the, the health bar thing is probably the best change. Um, backfill improvements literally shouldn't even be something that is listed. Like, that should just happen. Like, that that shouldn't be something that like needs to be improved. That That should be the standard. Um, changes the scoreboard's good, and ways to mitigate spawn camping, uh, that's, that's pretty good too. But to be honest with you, spawn camping mostly happens in, like, uh, steamroll games, you know? Um, like, if you're talking about, like, a zen who's walking back from spawn who's getting harassed by a tracer, and the tracer's killing them over and over, 
that, that's the tracer just playing well. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's a bad thing. But if you're talking about, like, you know, your whole team is, fuck it, their whole team is at your spawn door and you can't even leave because you're just getting rolled, that's like a matchmaking issue, I think, right? But anyways, um, to the extent of our discussions, even an ally-only mini-map feature was discussed. Some of these systems are under discussion and are in some development. I don't think a mini-map has a likelihood of shipping, but I do think party frames are likely. Okay, yeah, I, I agree with that. Mini-map, mini I think, is kind of dumb. I don't think Overwatch needs a mini-map. I think if, like, we don't need more clutter on the screen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really about that, but the party frames is nice. I like that. Basically, that just means, like, that on the side that you have, like, everyone on your team's health bar, which is good, especially if you're, like, a support player. Um, or a tank player. Tank player and support players would help a lot. Uh, it's our hope that staying closer to your teammates and having more information on what they're doing will help encourage team play. But what happens when your team is not working well together? We definitely want to make this a little less frustrating. We've talked about the new competitive system that's coming in Season 9, but there's a massive set of gameplay and balance changes coming to that season as well. That's good. Uh, many of these changes are aimed at reducing damage spikes in combat. Listen, man. I want to be super optimistic because they're Aaron obviously as always nails it right on the fucking money. But the recent balance changes have been fucking horrendous. Like genuinely and I and I'm really really trying not to be mean about it. Horrendous. Um so I understand what they're going for, but I hope to god it's in the right way. I hope to god. Um like like genuinely what we need is a global damage and healing nerf and that means dps support and tank damage all of them and then you also bring healing down right it like slows down the pace of the game which is good uh i won't get into all of it here we're working on a standalone post uh closer to the start of that season fair for the sake of the current discussion i'd like to talk about one aspect of it in Season 9, both tank and damage heroes will get a modified, tuned-down version of the support healing passive? What? Wait, what? Hold up, hang on, hang on, we gotta think about this. I am not a TF2 player, I've never played it, but isn't that, isn't that something they have in TF2? Like, everyone has global healing in certain ways? No? I thought if you were out of fight for such a long time, oh, it's Paladins. Oh, like, if you're out of the fight for, like, 10 seconds, your health starts going up or something like that. Is that Paladins? Oh, it's Paladins. Okay, my apologies. My apologies, chat. Um, listen, it's been a long week, okay? I... don't hate it. I actually don't hate it. But I could definitely see some issues. Certain characters like Sombra, Tracer, Genji, Ball. Big ones that come to mind. Um... Orisa Pepe laugh? Mm, frontline tanks, I don't think it's good. I could see it being valuable to, to like Rhine. Like if you put your shield up and don't take damage for like three seconds, you get a little bit of health back. That's actually kind of nice. You're trading shield damage for health. Low key, I'm kind of, I'm actually kind of down with it. I'm down to see what happens. Like actually one of my, one of my recent uh, critiques when I went over the recent patch notes um, for the mid season was that the, the patch notes have just been fucking terrible. Uh, and then the game just feels stale. Like, even if the game was more balanced and they didn't just start randomly tuning knobs, like, the game just feels stale. Like, everyone's just bored. You know, like, you can always tell by how bored the Overwatch community is by how much drama there's currently taking place on Twitter. Like, <laughs> that's always what happens. Um, and so, <laughs> if you know, you know. Anyways, though. Um, yeah, like, it just, it, like, the passes haven't been changed since, like, the start of the game. And, like, stuff like that, like, they've never even, like, experimented with. I'm down. I'm actually fucking down. Uh, this should give non-support players more options in terms of sustaining themselves. It should also take some of the pressure off support players to keep everyone alive, since individual players now have more control over their health pool. In Overwatch, there- oh, sorry. In Overwatch, there is a constant tug of war between the power of a team and the power of an individual hero or player. A change like this shifts that balance a bit. This is something that we are constantly evaluating. We still want Overwatch to be defined by team strategy and mechanics, but we feel this can also be pulled back a bit and possibly more in the future. So this is actually very, very interesting. And like, as I think, like, as I've read through it, I think more and more, like I think of like Echo Mercy or Pharaoh Mercy, and it's like, you could play Pharaoh, you could play Echo without a Mercy at that point, right? But then like, you know, 
does mercy become worse or does mercy all of a sudden become better right like i'm not even sure do pockets become more valuable or less valuable i don't actually know there's a lot of things i think you got to think about there um but that's a massive change like that is a fundamental gameplay change to the scale that we've never seen before i'm in i'm down i'm totally down like uh, like i've been saying this for a while the game just feels stale and it feels kind of boring at the moment so i'm down with shit which is shaking it up if we're like if they do some crazy shit like this and it feels good hell yeah like why not i still i still strongly believe that the reason why overwatch 2 felt so good in the beginning when we first started all playing it was because it was new and it felt exciting we need that feeling again we're also actively looking at ways uh, sorry, actively looking at new ways of improving the core gameplay experience. We just launched our first ever quick play hacked event. I haven't read into this, so I'm going to have to look at it after. Uh, for the weekend, there will be modified rules in effect for our quick play queues. This is the first iteration of quicker play, and its changes may many of the sorry, and it changes many of the quick play rules to make matches quicker. Payloads and capture times are faster, respawn times are quicker, and matches are shorter. This particular experiment is designed to look at how these changes affect player psychology. All right, Aaron kind of spitting with that one because that's actually very important. For instance, if a player spends less time waiting to respawn, will getting eliminated by an opponent be less frustrating? If matches are shorter, will each loss have the same sting as it currently does? There are also other out of game benefits that could come from this event, such as quicker matchmaking and quicker challenge completion. Based on the reception to these changes, the team might make some of them permanent or use them as a basis for other ideas to improve the game. That's what these quick play hacked events are designed to do, quicken the feedback loop and allow for swifter implementation of improvements to the game. In fact, we have one more coming later in season eight. You can learn more about quick play hacked here. That's all for this week. We'll be back uh, in a few to talk more about additional ways we're looking at improving Overwatch over the course of 2024. Thanks for reading and watching, and we'll see you in game. Okay, so final thoughts on it. Uh, quick play, quicker play is cool. Um, I haven't played it. I haven't even read about it really yet, so I don't even know how drastic it is. So I can't go too deep on it. But I like that they try stuff like that for a weekend. Why the fuck not? It makes it something fun. It's almost like a mini event. Um, the healing passive thing is insane. Uh, I'm actually very surprised by that. Uh, but hey, they're trying new shit. I'm, I'm in. I'm down. Uh, but overall, though, I'm, I'm still kind of waiting and seeing. I want to see what happens for season nine. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a part of this that I'm still super, super concerned about, which is this section. Any of those changes are aimed at reducing. Oh, sorry, it's this one. We talked about the new competitive system. Uh, season 9, but there's a massive set of gameplay and balance changes coming to that season as well. Many of those changes are aimed at reducing damage spikes in combat, and I won't get all of it here. We're working on the standalone post to be published closer to the start of that season. Um, balance at the moment, I have don't have a whole lot of faith in. Uh, recently, it's just not been good. So, if that is actually their goal, that would and they accomplish that goal, I think that it would slow down the pace of the game in a lot of ways. It would make it a lot more enjoyable. Uh, and I think that you would have less of that feeling of either being full HP or exploding um, on any of the rolls. And it would also feel less frustrating, I think, to fight supports because supports have like extra healing on themselves. So, like when they get low, they can heal back up. And that's why people think supports so OP and so broken, and so hard to kill just because they have an extra button. Um, when you're on like DPS or tank, you don't have that button, which is crazy. So anyways, though, um, pretty big juice. They said there'll be more coming as we get closer. Uh, but hell yeah, I, season season nine, everyone can heal and, and maybe the DPS Moiris take over. Who knows?